for Sports Scene. I'm Connor McGlynn, joined here by, right on my left-hand side, Max Goldwasser. Across the table, Lauren Dunn and Josh Cohen here to talk a little bit post-mortem basketball season here, guys. USC finished up in a heartbreaking loss in the second round of the NCAA tournament to Baylor by just a mere four points. But they finished this season with 26 wins, a program record. So let's start it off real strong. Was this season a surprise for you guys, Andy Enfield, in the fourth year of his contract? I'm going to go off and say yes, honestly. It was a surprise. Uh, I mean, I, I would say it's more of a surprise because of the what we had to go through during the season. They uh, Obviously, Benny Buff, Boatwright suffered an injury, missed 18 games. So that's a huge loss to the team. That's arguably their best player. So when you don't have that, you don't really expect a season like they had getting the most wins in program history. Yet, they went undefeated into uh, league play. You know, that's where things went shaky, obviously, with him out of the lineup, but they were still able to maintain. And when he came back, they, they were a little shaky at first, but got things together. And yeah, they made a decent run in the tournament. Things were scary at the beginning, but they got their revenge game against Providence, played really well against an SMU team that really turned it up towards the end of the season, and uh, played really well against Baylor. And I didn't see any of that coming. So to, to me, this was definitely a surprise, a good surprise. We got a shocked one over here. <laughs> what's, what's the feeling like over on that side of the table? I would say no shock here. I was expecting a really good season. In fact, I mean, I was hoping for an even better one. I think we all were. But you can't say that this wasn't a successful season. We had 23 wins, the most in program history, 13, almost 14 double-digit comebacks. I mean, I wasn't surprised that our team did so well. Yes, Benny being out was a huge detriment, but I think the team still held it together. I'm looking forward to seeing what we have next year because – and he's obviously done a really good job building on the program so far. So I can't wait to see what he has next season. So, Josh, we saw – or Lauren just touched on 26 wins, the program history mark. We have one and one. Were you surprised? I was not. No surprise. Not surprised. And I look back to SMU part one and how well USC played. It was at Galen when they beat SMU early in the season, part of that non-conference undefeated run uh, to start the year. But how well they played in that game – um, at a and those kinds of games I was looking and saying this team's going to be primed for a postseason run, even if they lose at Pauley to UCLA, even if they lose to a very good Oregon team at Galen uh, towards the tail end of the season. And you know what? I was not surprised by this tournament run. They did a fantastic job. Well, with that in mind, Josh, were you surprised that they lost to Baylor? A little bit uh, because of how well they were playing at uh, points in that game. And I will say – I thought at points USC when they were out playing Baylor and when Motley got into foul trouble, I said, I'm a little bit surprised now when it was over. It was kind of that feeling of, oh, man, it's over. Because I really thought with the quality that we were seeing out there from really everyone, sure, Chimezi was leading the charge, but really everyone out there for USC. I was a little bit surprised when they lost, and of course, a very close game, but a valiant effort and a whole lot to be proud of. Yeah, falling to a three seed is nothing short to kind of sell yourself short on right there. But obviously, one of the big players, Max mentioned it a little bit before, and Annie Enfield really obviously talked about it throughout the entire season, how USC was still able to deliver even when Boatwright was injured. But now that the season's over, the shift kind of starts looking at the NBA prospects, and specifically Boatwright and Chemezi met to two of USC's biggest names. So guys, let's start with Lauren over there. Are Chemezi met to and Benny Boatwright going to stay? Or are they going to test their waters like Julian Jacobs and Nikola Jovanovic last season and try to work themselves into the NBA? Well, I sure hope they stay. That's <laughs> a different answer, I know. You along with all USC fans. <laughs> so I do hope they stay. Do I think they're going to? I'm just going to go with yes. I, I think they're going to. They see that the program's been building. They want to see it through to fruition, I think. I hope. Um, <laughs> I mean, I... I don't know. It's hard. It's a hard decision, but I'm going to stick with yes, be positive. I think Chemezi and Benny both had great seasons this year, but as we talked about earlier, Benny was injured. I think he wants to see what a full season plan for the team on the court would look like, and I think that would be great for not only their uh, NBA prospects, but also USC. Yeah, and uh, I mean... To, to be uh, yeah, you said he he hasn't played. He hasn't played thirteen hundred minutes in his USC uh, career and this season, which is basically uh, a little bit as many as just as many minutes as Jordan McLaughlin played. So that's a chunk of time just this season alone. He's really inex like exper inexperienced enough for the NBA. Uh, you can't really match him up defensive wise against a lot of NBA players. He's kind of slow right now. He's going to have to work on his athleticism and quickness and. 
I think overall just you you saw how it worked out with the players who left a little bit early last season. I I, I think if they're smart, so that's just Bo right and Metu, yeah. He he's he's really good. It doesn't look like he's one of those players who hasn't really been playing basketball for all of his life. But there's a lot of fine tuning that he has to do in his game because he hasn't been playing basketball for a while. So I think because of those those two things and a lot of those key factors, those two guys should definitely stay if they're smart. And I think that's definitely what's going to happen in the end. Inexperience is definitely a, a very specific word that needs to be talked about when mentioning both of them because you guys brought up good points about Boat Right. He doesn't really have the game tape right now to be able to get a real look for the NBA franchises as to what he can be as a real true player. And Metu, he's still new to this game of basketball. He's only been playing for a few years now. You see his his rookie mistakes when it's goaltendings at the end of games, his late rotations over on whether it's defense or boxing out. But he, he needs time to still develop. He made a big step from year one to year two, and I think he still needs that one more year. Josh, what are your thoughts there? Completely. Year one to year two, we saw the progress. Now imagine year two to year three. Yikes. I think he's <laughs> going to look at what could I be a year from now in a USC uniform, maybe even making a deeper tournament run. Maybe that's in the back of his mind, too, along with his individual development. I think if Chemezi stays, he could be one of the best players in this conference without question. Yeah, you touched on it right there. And, and like, I think they also have to take into consideration where this team can possibly be next year. We also have due transfer. uh, Derek Thornton Jr. here is going to be the new point guard. And so you're going to have a stacked starting lineup if those two guys stay and stay healthy. And I think, like you said, they're going to make, they could make a very deep tournament run next year because they'll have a lot of experience. And if everyone can stay healthy, they're going to have a very stacked team. Uh, and I think that can definitely factor into their decision to stay. Obviously, a lot of hope for USC fans moving forward. Thornton coming in as the transfer, being able to redshirt this year and then play next year. Also, a big, talented recruiting class led by O'Bannon coming in, one of the top prospects in the nation. So a lot to look forward to for USC fans, especially if those two guys decide to stay. But guys, I think that's all we got. Thanks a lot for joining me here. And make sure to tune in throughout the week on Sports Scene USC on Twitter and Facebook. And tune in for more of our information on AddenbergMedia.com.